Good morning once again and uh, welcome to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're moving our conversation now into uh, a talk about the renewed fight against drug trafficking. The new head of the NDLEA, uh, former Lagos State Governor um, um, Buba Marwa, of course, since his um, entry into that position, has taken very, very delicate and, and uh, stern steps in the fight against uh, drug trafficking. We've seen, of course, uh, very, very interesting stories, uh, stories rather, of uh, um, you know, drug uh, traffickers being arrested, drug busts being carried out in billions and billions of Naira. This morning, we're joined by Femi Baba Femi, NDLEA spokesman, and of course, to have a conversation about this. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure being with you. All right. So I'm going to start with, you know, you addressing the uh, idea that there seems to be a fresh energy in the NDLEA. It seems like there's a new force, you know, that seems to be working around the NDLEA. Is that right? And, and would you say that Buba Marwa's entry has changed what the NDLEA currently stands as? I, I, I agree with you, absolutely. Um, and this um, can easily be explained by the personality of the individual who is um, currently the chairmanship executive of the NDLA. Um, if you go back to his antecedents, whether as a military governor in Bono State, whether as military administrator in Lagos State, or even his um, foreign assignments, that is whether as defense attaché in um, the Nigerian embassy in DC or in um, the United, I mean, Nigerian's mission at the United Nations, or even as um, the Nigerian High Commissioner to South Africa, Lesotho, and Swaziland. You know, wherever he finds himself is someone that has really distinguished himself. And um, uh, it's not surprising that um, what you are seeing, what you are witnessing in NDLA today, has to do with the personality of the leadership that is um, General Marwa at this moment. Um, it's somebody that brings passion, it's somebody that brings energy, it's somebody that brings a lot of inspiration into, into what he's doing. Uh, it's the same workforce that has been um, um, in the agency that you still have there at the moment, save for a few uh, additions here and there, but then what um, it shows you is when you have a good leader who can motivate people to do the right thing, to do what they ought to do, you get results. And that's why um, the NDLA, NDLA is recording successes um, everywhere across the country today. All right. Might sound like an indictment on the uh, previous head of the NDLEA, but uh, I'll save you from that one. But let, let's now talk about the current systems. Uh, so, so, so what exactly, aside you know, the personality of Boba Marwa and, of course, the leadership qualities like you've mentioned. Are there new systems? Are there new, um, it, have, have there been changes in the operational um, systems of the NDLEA that have led to, you know, this new um, success has been recorded here and there? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you recall that, um, again, let me also tie this back to when, uh, uh, Mawa was in Borno and Lagos. When he was in Borno, he did um, set up what you called Operation Saki then to tackle insecurity there. And when he was in Lagos, he coordinated um, Operation Sweep, uh, which today metamorphosed into what you have as an um, RRS in Lagos at the moment. Um, when he resumed on the 18th of January, um, he met with um, all the commanders and top management staff of the agency and told them, gave them his um, vision and mission and um, told them without missing words that his maxim, the maxim of the new leadership will be offensive action. Offensive action means take the war to the doorsteps and the hideouts of uh, drug traffickers, peddlers, users, and even the barons. And that's why, um, Virtually everywhere they go now, virtually every route they try to move drugs, you will see NDLA busting them there, whether at the airport in Lagos, whether at um, the Tinkan port, the Apapa port. Even talking about the borders, the, 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 the land borders, you see, um, 
Recall recently, just about a week ago, a man who was trying to move cocaine through the land border um, in Shokoto to the Nigeria Republic and ultimately to Algeria, he was arrested. And um, at the moment, I can also tell you that they have also devised some other means of trying to traffic drugs through um, some of our courier companies. This is yet to be let out. We're yet to release this because we are still gathering the data. Hopefully, we'll be releasing the information by the weekend. But we've been able to, in the last one week there about, we've been able to nap them in three courier companies trying to move cocaine out of the country. So wherever they go, they definitely know now that they have, um, they have um, a mash in NGLA. We, we, we really are right. out for them, wherever route they are trying to take, whether in the air, on the land, or through the sea. OK. Mr. Baba Femi, um, Mao has been speaking to the, to the press. And one of the things he mentioned was how endemic drug use had become in Nigeria. He said drug usage in the country is now at approximately 15 million. Um, this is nearly three times the uh, global estimate, the global prevalence of drug use you know, globally. How do we tie this to the prevalence of crime and criminality in the country? Absolutely. Um, just like um, he had said, um, it's been established now that there is a nexus between drug abuse and the criminalities you have all across the country because uh, no normal human being will wake up in the night, move to um, a boarding school, and move over 300 innocent young children into the forest. No normal person would do that. No normal person would um, go in the dead of the night to be kidnapping people for ransom. Obviously, these people are acting based on the effect of drugs. A lot of them have abused drugs, and this is giving them a false, I mean, false impression about what they are capable of doing, and that's why they go all out. Like even the Sharma recently revealed, according to information available to him, that even some of these people now, out of desperation for drugs, because... Um, the agency is cutting supply, all their supply routes. So they get desperate to get drugs. And now at the moment, they are also making um, uh, demands, demands for drugs in ransom, trying to say, OK, when they kidnap your relation or somebody close to you, they ask you to bring a ransom or say 5 million era and bring this specification of drugs also as part of the ransom. So it's, it's that bad. So that shows you that and in, in some instances they even they take the drug first and count it to be sure it's complete before they even check the money so that shows that they depend largely on drugs and that is why um the ndla has been moving around to mobilize um all stakeholders both um i mean all the government at both the federal state and the local government levels the civil society organizations, the NGOs, and even the common man on the street, because this thing um, is telling on the well-being, the growth, and the development of the nation. And so it should not be seen as a fight for NDLA alone. It should be seen as a collective fight. Hmm. And when we see it as a collective fight, what it then means is we will all have to take action. When you see somebody abusing drugs, when you see somebody trafficking drugs or peddling drugs, then you give the information so that um, the appropriate agency, as in, in this case, the NDLA, can do something quickly. And we've been acting on information, and that is why um, at the moment you are seeing uh, bust here and there. Because if we don't do this, now that we have about 15 million Nigerians hooked on drugs, that is, like you rightly said, three times the global prevalence rate, which is huge enough, which is, which is alarming on its own. And it's not been estimated that in another 30 years, that's by 2050, if something drastic is not done, they will probably have another about 30 million Nigerians hooked 
on drugs. Me, no nation but, can survive that. Mr. Baba so Fleming, before yeah? this scourge, yes, please. No, really, just on the back of what you've said, I mean that uh, by 2050, about 30 million Nigerians may become drug abusers. Really, it seems the NDLA yeah. has a lot of work on its hands. How does it intend to tackle this giant challenge? Yes, um, the agency at the moment, um, like I said, we're trying to mobilize all the stakeholders. We're trying to let um, all the, I mean, government at the various layers to understand the enormity of the problem, to join hands with us. And that's why you will see that um, in the last two weeks, we have visited um, the governor of Rivers. We have visited the governor of Adamawa. Apart from assessing and um, touring the state commands there, we have also taken the message to the state governors so that they can understand the enormity of the problem, so that they can join hands and support the organization. But beyond that, we have also, um, we're at the moment trying to push for um, some measures uh, because one, this thing has to do, I mean, we are talking about a three-pronged approach here. One, that is the drug um, supply reduction, which we're doing through law enforcement by cutting down all the routes through which they supply. Two, uh, drug demand reduction, that is making sure that those, the about 180 million Nigerians, 185 million Nigerians at the moment who are not yet on drugs to be sure that they don't get hooked. So we're trying to take the advocacy there to, I mean, out there to let them know that this thing is not good for them, for their health, for their mental state, for their, uh, for their psychological state. It's not good for their families because you will see, um, I think I read about someone in the East recently who said, he had to kill um, his wife and his own child because of the overdose of drugs he took. He didn't know. So no All normal right. person would do that kind of a thing. It was mm -hmm. when the dog, I mean, the drug wore out. When um, he came back to his normal senses, he realized, wow, I have done this. Wow. So right. uh, I, that I, is I to tell you, that is to show you the effect. Yeah, I, sorry. I, I, I want us to also then, um, of course, speak about the you know, um, extra help that the NDLEA needs at a time like this. You know, I'm sure that, you know, you are still struggling with uh, Nigeria's porous borders, um, you know, and uh, that's definitely still a challenge. But does the NDLEA still need more investment in better drug screening equipment? Uh, do we have sniffer dogs? Uh, do we have uh, whistleblowing, you know, um, uh, platforms, you know, for the, for the NDLEA? Um, what more would you, you know, yeah. say that needs to be invested in or needs to be put in place to ensure that the fight against uh, drug trafficking um, is somehow successful here in Nigeria? There is no doubt that the agency needs a lot of funding, a lot of funding at the moment. There is no doubt about that. And um, the, the leadership of the agency is uh, talking to the appropriate authorities to ensure that the agency is properly funded. Yeah, where would that funding go Beyond into? Beyond that, um, excuse me? Yeah, where, where, would, where would that funding go into? If, you, if the agency gets the extra funding that it needs, where would you say it must be directed to? Yeah, definitely operations. Operations and also advocacy. Trying to mobilize those that are not yet um, hooked on drugs to let them know the dangers. And that's why recently, um, about a week ago, um, a special purpose committee was set up, made up of professionals um, in relevant fields, professions, to help the organization to mobilize Nigerians. You know, these are people that have been working in drug-related fields, NGOs, psychiatric uh, professionals, academia and what have you. We got them together and uh, put them in a committee and empower them to go out there and um, collate ideas on how best we can reach the people, both from the top down to the lowest um, cadet of the society. And beyond that, um, in, a, in a couple of weeks, we should be 
having some um, dedicated communication channels through which information at the moment even when we are yet to put that in place um, that is some communication um, channel through which people can give information anonymously to the agency. At the moment, our, our social media handles, people are passing information to us and we're acting on them. I have known, I mean, I'm aware of a number of arrests that have been made based on information passed through, through um, whether direct, directly or through our social media handles. We're, we're working on all that. And um, we are also trying as much as possible. We are, we are, we are also taking the message to the, the both the Muslim community and the Christian community. In everywhere we go, we take it to them because we know that we are a religious nation, and um, the the clergy they are very very um, critical right. in this um, in this um, fight. All right, hold on, Mr. Baba Femi. Um, for those who you know are maybe in the dark with regards to what the NDLA really is responsible for, uh, quickly clarify you know for our viewers this morning um, what things you know what drugs in particular does the NDA LEA, um, um, fight against is it just cocaine or do we have other you know drugs that are currently being used in Nigeria that the NDA LEA, of course you know has continued to um, fight and, and that includes maybe marijuana um, and um, you know the pills that are being abused those you know um, I can't call their names out on TV. I, I don't yeah. even know their names. Um, but what exactly are the drugs yeah. that are completely outlawed in Nigeria that the NDLEA is responsible for um, fighting? Yeah, we have quite a number of them. Um, it's not just about cocaine alone. You have heroin there. Uh, beyond that, you have um, uh, um, cannabis, whatever, the one we popularly call um, India hemp. Or marijuana, like you said, um, you have the likes of tramadol. You have um, uh, uh, a, a quite. A, you see, there are some of them that fall under uh, controlled drugs, and those that are totally banned. So this is is not. I mean, this thing is not just limited to uh, the popular cocaine or marijuana. It's, um, it's a combination, it's a gamut of, um, of uh, a lot of drugs, but then uh, they are not something because there are certain, um, some of them, that, like those that are under the controlled uh, drugs, Yes. by the time you get above a certain milli milligram, then you are flouting the law. So, so share with us, what is, the, what, is the, um, what is the approved... Um, uh, quantity that you know a, a person can move around or can be found with, um, with for example, Indian hemp cannabis. Is that one of the, is that one of the controlled uh, drugs now? No, 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 no. I mean, in, um, um, what is it called? Um, cannabis is totally banned. Okay. It's totally illegal. So, so which we of them is a, would you say is a controlled drug? Like I told you, I said um, a drug like tramadol, you have some milligram of it that are used specifically uh, for medical purposes. But then when it goes beyond... Yeah, beyond what now? That, that that's what I'm milligram. trying to clarify. Beyond what? So if, if, you, if a person yeah. is seen in traffic... If, if, if you... Yeah, if you if you are talking, or if you if for instance, well, it's not something that should also be found in traffic. They don't know those things. No, I'm I'm, I'm just saying, if a person is drugs. is seen in traffic, maybe you know regular um, stop and search. These things are happening in the country, and they they find you know tramadol pills on them. At what stage is it illegal, or is it a problem? You know, can they have one or two? Can they have a you know, whole you know sachet? Can no. they have a, what exactly? No, no, you are you are not allowed. You are not allowed, especially when it's beyond the milligram allowed outside for, for medical purposes. When you are talking of somebody taking you find or somebody who has a um, 225 milligram and above, or even up to down to 120 milligram, those are not supposed to be found on anybody for medic. These are okay. things that intoxicates and get people out of their senses. 
So, Mr. Baba Femi, I wanted us to shift our focus to what the NDLA is doing with regards to fight, fighting crime amongst, amongst kids and adolescents. Because really, lots of children, especially in secondary schools and even in universities, are drug abusers. I see lots of kids around, and as they're talking, I see their tongue, it's blue color. And when I ask, they say it's, you know, people confirm that these are certain drugs that they take that change their tongue to the color blue. So what really is the NDLA doing with regards enlightening children in secondary schools? Do we have advocacy programs when, you know, officers, you know, go to secondary schools to teach people about the dangers of drug abuse and to enlighten them to, you know, rehabilitate, you know, if any of them are abusers of drugs? Absolutely, absolutely. We have such programs. Um, um, like I said, just about a week ago, the agency inaugurated a special purpose um, committee to mobilize the civil society and NGOs out there to get involved. Because we know that it's not what um, uh, the personnel of the agency alone can do, cover over 200 million Nigerians. So we need to bring on board other stakeholders to empower them um, and to work with them so that we can go to these different um, areas. Um, I mean, and we are, do, they are, we are doing, I mean, there are quite, quite a lot of the stakeholders are doing uh, quite fine in this regard. Some of them are going to secondary school, some of them are going even to primary schools, some of them are going to tertiary institutions. And the NDLA is also at the moment proposing that um, for anybody who wants to uh, make, go into the university, uh, the agency be allowed to conduct drug tests on them. So that at this point, uh, you don't, you, when you know that you, you will go through a drug test to gain admission into the university, then um, if you have, if you have, if you have been on it, you will need to desist. And if you are not yet there, you will know that at any point in time, this could land you, put you in trouble. I'm also aware that um, the agency is working on ensuring that um, uh, even the political office seekers, drug tests are also conducted on them. That is, I'm talking of our political leaders, whether you want to go for any office in the land, we're proposing that drug tests be conducted on them. We're also working on ensuring that um, public servants, the civil servants, Drug test. In fact, I can tell you that um, uh, one of a prominent agency of government at the federal level allows NDLA to conduct um, drug tests on its staff. And um, okay. the right. federal ministry is also at the moment working with NDLA to conduct um, tests on the workforce of the ministry. So okay. we're, we're, um, we're moving it around uh, across. All right, Mr. Baba Femi, um, sorry, um, uh, we're out of time. Uh, but, you know, we get the point and we hope that the NDLA is able to pull through with some of the new steps that it is taking to ensure that Nigeria, um, as much as possible, um, reduces the level of drug traffic and drug usage here in the country. Um, and like you said, it's not just cocaine, it is heroin, it is, um, you know, tramadol, it is uh, cannabis, it's, it's, it's a lot of it. Um, and so we, of course, uh, we look forward to having another conversation with you um, as more of these drug busts are reported in the news. Thanks, uh, Femi Baba Femi, for joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right. All right. So we're turning the, the focus of the conversation from, you know, the anti-drug trafficking, you know, initiatives of the NDLEA to vaccine distribution in Nigeria. Joining us then will be the Minister of State for Health, Olorunimbe Mamura.